131873 is our open line number. Now, let's talk about retailing. I noticed today Rosalind Kogan said that uh, he's divorcing from traditional retail, citing irreconcilable differences. This, of course, in the uh, in the light of that Productivity Commission report into retail and, and weaker figures that came out from Treasury earlier in the week. Uh, we've spoken to Rosalind before. You'll know that. He's uh, part of the BAW 2010 Fast 100 list, Young Rich list, Fast Starters list, Retail Innovator of the Year in 2010, um, Virgin Australia Top Gun in Tech 2011. My God, I could be reading these forever. I'd better not just get him on the line. Hello, Rosalind. Good to talk to you. G'day, Luke. My grandmother couldn't have introduced me better than that. <laughs> well, she might have uh, She might have included a few more things, but thank you for yeah. saying that. Uh, what, what did you make of, uh, and of course there's been lots of discussion about this, and you and I have spoken about online, v the, uh, the, the stores and the shops around the place before, but... Uh, and you've also made the point that retailers now have to really get on board. That's a way of dealing with this. Do, do you sense the message is getting through or do you still feel like a bit of a, a lone warrior doing this? Look, in terms of what we're seeing in the media, I don't think the message is really getting through. In terms of the actions we're seeing from consumers and how they're changing the way in which they're shopping and changing the way in which they spend their money, it's certainly getting through. We've got, um, you know, all the retail commentators and economists uh, saying all this sort of stuff at the moment. Retail is slowing down. We're seeing a massive slowdown in retail. But the truth of the matter is we've got two very different types of retail going on in Australia at the moment. We've got the traditional retail and bricks and mortar retail. And then on the other side, we've got online retail and online retail is booming and growing at a very very fast pace it's where all the innovation is and we've got some great companies in australia that are doing it really well and they're experiencing you know huge growth month on month like kogan is Mm. and the other side of retail is reporting a slowdown so i think it's a bit unfair the way that the retail sector is being reported at the moment and that that's been you know what uh, made us put out the statements that we put out today because we think that we need to look at it as you know not a slowdown in the retail sector but a change in the retail sector. And that's that's important. You've talked about a three-speed uh, economy, and that's the traditional retail will be the second speed, and this online retail as the third speed. Am I reading correct that the internet could have contributed fifty billion dollars to Australia's GDP last year? I believe that's correct, yes, and it's growing very, very fast Jeez. as well. So, um, you know, and, yeah, it's just it, it hasn't been reported correctly and people aren't looking at it the right way. The Internet should be seen as an awesome opportunity when it comes to retailing and um, people should be encouraged to look at it and think of new ways to innovate and how can we let Australia catch up to what's happening in America and the UK in terms of their online retail sector. Now, that's in, 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 interesting you say that. Sorry to jump in, mate, but interesting yes. you say that because I wanted to ask you, and I know you travel overseas a bit, give me a sense of what... Has America been through this? Are they going through this? They've been through it, you know, the, the, and it's a massive industry there. The, the place where the idea for Kogan came up was while I was studying at the University of Miami in 2003, completing my degree, and saw that all the uni kids were buying everything online. Hmm. We recently expanded to the UK because 99% of UK's internet users who are aged 18 and over have made a purchase in the last year. So uh, Australia's quite a bit behind the UK and the US when it comes to online retail, but we're we're certainly catching up. There's some exciting businesses going on, and uh, it's definitely a booming sector. So I I noticed today in one of the papers there was a uh, a small local uh, furniture manufacturer. He designed and made his own furniture, and uh, the shop's doing no good, but online he's doing really well. Uh, Is this what the retailers of today are just going to have to deal with and, and, and move into? And how difficult is it? I mean, you started from scratch, and I would imagine it was very difficult, but 
right idea, right time in Australia in Bracecogan. But if you were starting out now, will they be able to get the same sort of return someone like you, Ruslan, has got? Because it seems to me that perhaps the horse has already bolted, hasn't it? Um, look, we're just at the start of the massive boom in this industry. Fair I dink it. That, yeah, I think that there's still a lot and a lot of opportunity. If you if you look around, the, not many of our retailers have a strong online presence. And any product you've got, you can market it much better online and you can sell it much more efficiently. And you can essentially, with one online store be able to service the whole country and be able to provide them with that product. And that creates a lot of efficiencies. And all of that said, when it comes to the price game, online is always going to be the winner. So bricks and mortar is not going to die, but the industry is changing. And the barriers to entry have been reduced significantly. Mm. Uh, people tell me, they go, oh, you're so young. How have you managed to start start?" start such an empire and the truth is that if I was any older I probably couldn't because it all happened at the right time 20 years ago if I wanted to start Kogan not only would have only been eight years old but I would have only also <laughs> needed to have I would have needed to have investments of 50 to 100 million dollars to get all the retail space around the country yes. get all the showrooms get yeah. all the stock and things like that you can do it much more efficiently these days yeah wow um, gee, that's interesting. There was one other question I uh, I wanted to ask, and I just had this vision, and I've lost my train of thought, but this, this vision of all this retail space, what happens to that? Because this is what I was going to ask you, and it, it's kind yeah. of inter intertwined with this thing. The, the notion that someone who's buying has to touch and feel and look at and examine, play with the remote, and let's talk TVs and other things like that that you sell, is that's that's just a fallacy, is it? The, the people expect when they go online, it's a bloody TV. I'm going to see the picture. I want to know the screen size, the um, the refresh rate, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Once I've nailed that down, I've got a decent warranty. All I have to do is press yes. I'll confirm that. Give the the card and away I go. So I don't have to touch things. Don't have to look at things. And um, if that's the way, if this is the way it's going to go, and you obviously are onto something here, then. You would imagine there'd be a lot of retail space freed up, wouldn't there? Certainly. Like, on that, on that point, people, their mindset is tra transitioning. So in the past, they thought, I need to walk into a store and I need to see it. They very quickly realised, well, you know, me seeing it for two minutes in the store with a pushy salesperson next to me doesn't really add that much value. Whereas doing a Google search and reading what reviewers and people that have tested that product over weeks and things like that have said, mm. they can get much more accurate information. So you can actually get a better feel for a product when you're doing a quick Google search for it and reading reviews than you can by walking into a store. With all the empty retail space, uh, look, it certainly means because retail is becoming more efficient and it's becoming a warehouse direct-to-consumer business model rather than warehouse and then to the distributor or onto the retailer, there's going, to be, there's going to be spare retail space. And that's up to the entrepreneurs of the world to work out what they're going to do with that space. Yeah. Are they going to build bigger and better cafes? Are they going to build... Uh, movie cinemas, ice skating rinks, or are they going to do similar to what Apple's doing, whereby Apple's building a community with their store? It's not about trying to sell the consumer the product. It's about come in there, have a play with it, see what it does, talk to the experts, we'll help you out with anything, and then we're happy for you to go home and purchase it online in your own spare time. So it becomes more of an educational feel and building the brand and building a community around a brand and, you know, getting a good feel for what the product's about rather than the actual transactional environment. And you're seeing a lot of companies do that. Nespresso is doing it now uh, with their coffee bars. They've got all these uh, shops set up across retail. In, you know, they've hired out retail space, but they don't actually sell you anything at the Nespresso bar. You go in there in the chilled out, relaxed environment to try out the coffee. And that that's where it's going to head towards. And then they know that once you've experienced that, you'll become a lifetime customer through their website buying their products. So yeah. entrepreneurs, uh, you know, they get very little sleep. They're always thinking about what are better and newer ways to create things, and I'm sure they'll find something to do with all that retail space. Always a good chat, mate. Thanks, Rosalind, very much.
Good stuff. Thanks, Luke. Good to talk to you. Kogan.com.au. And you can see his business online anytime you like. It's coming up to 22 past nine. This is MTR 1377.